Hey guys, welcome back. This is Emily from Telltale, and Greg and I are going to be reviewing The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. So Sleepy Hollow is a very, very short piece of literature. Um, it kind of like, it's a little too long to call a short story, but it's still technically a short story. Um, it depicts the very, a very brief point in time for our main character, Ichabod Crane. And Ichabod Crane in the main story is, he's a school teacher. And honestly, a mediocre one at best. So if you guys are familiar with The Legend of Sleepy Hollow from, say, Hollywood depictions of it, um, kind of, there's a lot of literature that alludes to it, things like that. Basically, everything you know based off of those storylines is wrong. Um, I love the Sleepy Hollow film uh, starring Johnny Depp and... It's, this storyline is very different from the original one because the story, the piece of literature itself, is such a short piece of literature, you really couldn't make a full-length featured film for it. Uh, so yeah, synopsis. Ichabod Crane is a small-town school teacher um, in kind of New England area. They say upstate, I think it's like upstate New York. And... He is just kind of a mediocre guy who has a lot of superstitions. He's fascinated with them. He reads about them and he believes them because he's a very gullible, gullible man. And so he's kind of, you know, just this mediocre school teacher who's just trying to get by. And he starts not really catching feels or falling in love with this young lady, but he recognizes that her family is extremely wealthy. So he's kind of mediocre teacher gone gold digger, trying to woo her and get involved. And so he kind of attends their house and shows up and, you know, shows up to parties and things of this wealthy family. Not that he's not invited, but he kind of isn't invited. <laughs> So he, uh, he starts kind of wooing this woman, but she starts kind of having an attraction to this other guy. And so Ichabod's just kind of, you know, sees this gentleman as his nemesis. But one night after walking home late at night from one such event at the uh, home and farm of this very wealthy family, he encounters the local legend. Um, and this you know, has been a legend that these people talk about all the time. And uh, he's just, you know, walking home, hears hoofprints, footsteps, stuff like that. And uh, he just starts running and he gets to a covered bridge and he runs across it, but basically disappears. Like nobody knows what happened to Ichabod Crane. So in the story, everybody like, Spoiler alert, everybody kind of acts like, oh, he disappeared because the Headless Horseman got him. But really, in the story, it says, well, some people saw that he went and became a lawyer. Um, some people have encountered him later. But the locals prefer to say he just disappeared and never came back because he was so mediocre and, you know, didn't owe anybody anything that <clears throat> nobody really cared about him. He was a very inconsequential human. And um, it is alluded that this prank has been pulled by the gentleman who was his rival, trying to, you know, get his goat and scare him away because he really just wanted to woo this woman. So the piece of literature, again, really short. If you're a slow reader, you could probably read it in two hours, at least. It's, it's really a fast read. There's not a lot of details to the story. Um, so it's just a really quick go through. Uh, the world building, again, you're in New England. Forested, small town, rural, countryside. So I mean, just think about countryside with a lot of hills. Um, so there's not really a ton of substance to this story. I think what's most interesting is... The story's famous, but I think for the wrong reasons. Like, a lot of people are like, 
try to make Ichabod Crane to be this really sympathetic character, and he's not. He's kind of a gold digging jerk who's not. He's lazy. He doesn't like to work. He's mediocre as a teacher. He just kind of is floating by, and he's a very average person. Um, so I think the interesting part of this story is not so much that the story exists, but the ways that pop culture has blown this story up so that this character seems to have a lot more significance than he actually does. Like, he's not a very sympathetic character. Um, I had to say, I was actually, I had only read this a few months ago for the first time. Like, I shouldn't say a few months ago. Like, over, over the winter, I had read it. And um, it was, I was not expecting it to be as short as it was. It was a very, very short book. And when you see all of these pieces of, you know, pop culture that surround this story, it's really not that big of a story. Like, it's more interesting and intriguing, I think, to see how popular culture has taken artistic license and blown it up uh, instead of the story as it was. Um, and I have to say, you know, it just, it's interesting because while the story is so, such a big deal to pop culture, it's not, it doesn't seem like it should be a very significant story. Um, I, what I do appreciate is, uh, the perpetuation of urban legends. Of course, we as a country don't have a lot of myths um, because we are such a young country, so it's kind of fun to have this be like a modern myth or urban legend, not even urban legend, it's like a rural legend um, of something that may or may not be real. It's kind of like a Bigfoot or Mothman sort of situation where you have this unusual phantom, not sure what it is kind of storyline. And um, one of the things I think it does too is it kind of shows how manias can happen like we talk about the Salem witch trials was a witch mania this is kind of like a phantom mania and this kind of starts starts the uh, concept of I think American legends and myths so I really do appreciate it for that significance I think it's interesting how um, pop culture has taken it a step further or even multiple steps further and just basically rewrote this whole story um, I understand why though. So honestly, I didn't, I was a little disappointed because I do have all these preconceived notions of pop culture. And I think that's another thing that's really important to discuss is that we have a culture now that kind of just takes these classics and really does rebuild them a lot. So I think it's important to kind of talk about how an original piece of literature actually is and how we perceive it because of what Hollywood or whatever has done to it and how that morphs our expectations um, of a piece of literature because visual media is visual media. So it uh, it's kind of fascinating because I had expected more simply because of all these you know different artists who had taken artistic license only to find that the story really wasn't that really big of a deal. I guess the main moral of the story would have to be like superstition is everywhere. And there are, I think another thing it kind of talks about is I guess how impressionable small minds are. Not to say that you're, you have a small mind if you're a farmer, but these small town, you know, folks have those smaller minds that just worry about the locale they don't know what's going on in the world they don't know a lot of other things so I think that is an interesting topic of discussion as well in this particular piece of literature is the power of ignorance like a lot of these people just kind of the ignorance is what perpetuates the story you know where they believe Ichabod Crane disappeared, but he just got scared out of town and decided to go become a lawyer. Um, so it's 
It's really an interesting piece of literature to analyze, despite how small it is, and especially in the context of how pop culture has perpetuated it. So, I mean, that's more interesting than the story itself. Again, I was kind of disappointed with how short it was and with how, I guess, lacking. Like, it just was a lot less, it was very lackluster compared to what pop culture has uh, led us to believe. This is another case where Emily and I are going to part company a little bit because I liked Legend of Sleepy Hollow. I thought it was good. The difficulty in getting into a story like this is, is that it was written a very long time ago at a time when all the things that we're used to with fiction and literature really didn't exist yet. Novels were just coming into their own. Uh, Cervantes wrote the first novel with Don Quixote. Um, you had some of the very first novelists outside the United States were people like Sir Walter Scott. Washington Irving was the first generation of professional writers, professional authors in the United States. The United States was a brand new country. You know, the Revolutionary War was still in everybody's memory. And what we are used to today with fiction just didn't exist yet. You didn't have Edgar Allan Poe. You didn't have um, Nathaniel Hawthorne. You didn't have Herman Melville yet. And of course, you didn't have any of what we've got in the 20th century, like Stephen King or H.P. Lovecraft or um, any of what we're used to. The style of writing back then was very different from what we're used to. Everything was different. People were different. The country was different. In New York State, you still had a lot of very wild areas around the, in the Hudson River Valley. Artists didn't have to go very far to, to get totally back to nature and see wild nature. Indians were still running around all throughout most of this country um, and in some cases were a danger for for white men traveling, European descended people traveling. And the other problem is the adaptations of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow are very different from the story. So if you go in with that expectation that you're going to get something a lot like the Tim Burton movie or even a lot like the Disney cartoon, you're going to be disappointed because they changed it. it. They didn't stick with the original story. And yes, the original story was a short story. Washington Irving didn't write novels. Novels were a whole new thing then. He wrote short stories and published them in, in um, periodicals, which were another fairly new thing at that time. And he collected a bunch of his short stories and essays, what he called sketches, into the sketchbook and published it. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow specifically is um, very different from what Emily was expecting in a simple matter of it being um, about a real place. Sleepy Hollow is a real town in the state of New York. And back then, it had a lot of legends. It had a lot of ghosts. And um, I don't know that the Headless Horseman specifically was a real legend of the, of the town of Sleepy Hollow, but it was a small town with small town people who had their legends and told them And Washington Irving was fascinated by all the different legends all around the United States at that time. He, in his introduction to the sketchbook, he says how he was interested in all the different legends and ghost stories and, and was investigating all the small towns and, and small neighborhoods all around the United States. And 
and was interested in those things and so he would have visited Sleepy Hollow and so he he was writing about a real place. He fictionalized he fictionalized it with Ichabod Crane and, and the other characters of the story. But the story really isn't about the Headless Horseman the way we think of it today. It really is about Ichabod Crane. And uh, it's a character sketch is what it comes down to. So it became highly influential as everybody's favorite Halloween story for, for a great many years before any movies were ever made of it. This was a favorite story in, in the United States in, in a young country that was just discovering its own myths and legends and stories and, and just forming its own authors and forming its own culture. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow was instrumental in building that culture. And it is a very well-written story. Um, the style of writing is a little denser than what we're used to today, but it's, it's what was typical for the time. If you read Hawthorne, you're going to get the same thing. If you read Melville, you're going to get the same thing. Um, Longfellow, you're going to get that same kind of, kind of thing. It, that was the style of writing of the day. You have to take those things into consideration when approaching literature of the past. It's not going to be what we write today. If that bothers you, don't read the classics. They're going to be different from what you're used to. If you think you can deal with that and work through it, it's going to be rewarding because you're going to have some good stories. Like I say, the, the character sketch of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow is very well done. You get it in a, in a short number of pages. You get a strong description of Ichabod Crane. You get a strong description of Sleepy Hollow. The Hadless Hessian Horseman, say that one three times fast. He's kind of kept off to the side, and for good reason. He was just a myth, a local myth. And um, Washington Irving used that myth, myth to scare Ichabod Crane out of town because he was an impressionable and gullible man. So, yeah, thanks for uh, watching. We uh, love for you to like, subscribe, talk to us about how much you liked Sleepy Hollow, um, or if you did it all, if you have any preconceived notions about it like I did, I think that's a huge and fascinating uh, subject to discuss. So go ahead and like, subscribe, let us know what you think. We'll see you next time.